I am DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be installing Pop! OS on a Raspberry Pi 4, but with a twist. I'm going to put it on an SSD. Stay tuned right after this. You know, there's always a couple of things you have to have in order to get started. And so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go get a tool that allows me to choose where to install the uh, Raspberry Pi OS. Now, I'm not actually going to install the Raspberry Pi OS, but I am going to use their tool. And to do that, I would download the Raspberry Pi Imager. So you can get it for Windows, Mac OS, or Linux. Now it's asking, telling me for this is a, uh, it thinks Debian is Ubuntu, which it isn't, but it still uses the same Debian files to install. So that shouldn't be a problem. And so I've already downloaded it, it's right there. And the other thing I need is I need the Raspberry Pi version of, of Pop! OS, which is right here. And I have downloaded that as well. So the next step is to launch the Raspberry Pi Imager. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get to the Imager and we'll bring that up. And then I already have downloaded the Pop! OS and I've already downloaded the Imager. So obviously I'm ready the Imager. So we'll go ahead and choose the operating system first. And we're going to use a custom mode today in order to actually install this. And then I'm going to choose the storage device, and that's this T5. We'll go ahead and write it out. And then it'll begin writing on the drive. Just make sure it's not mounted. If, you, if it is mounted, you'll get an error. It says... Hey, I can't write to the device. It's be it's in use. Okay, so we're done with that. All right, so I've uh, I've I've uh, ins I've inserted the um, T5 SSD into the USB 3 port. I have restarted the Raspberry Pi, and now we're on the setup. So we're gonna we're gonna just go over here and we'll click next. And it's asking me which keyboard layout I'm using. It's US English. That's correct. If I had any Wi-Fi, I would set that up. I'm not using Wi-Fi for this today. I'm using uh, a LAN connection. Local services, I don't want on. You may want to. I don't. Uh, I want Chicago as my time zone. And if you have any online accounts, you can set those up here. And we'll go ahead and give it my default user. Now this is a Raspberry Pi 400. So it is a keyboard uh, with a little bit faster processor than the normal Pi when we're doing this. Now this has to restart. So we're waiting for it to come back up. There's an additional uh, welcome screen. That's the same one that you get in Pop OS when you initially boot from your recently installed uh, distribution. So there we go. So we are now executing the Pop OS that I installed. And we have our usual, you know, do I want no dock? Do I want it to extend or do I just want it in the center? I like that. And then whether or not I want to, you know, see the workspace or the application. Some information about what key to use to launch the application launcher. And then there is uh, a trackpad option. Now this, my setup does not have one, so that will not be of importance to me. I'm going to leave it on dark and then we're done. So let's just take a look and see how much memory we do have. So it looks like it's four gig, which that should be fine for today. That should be okay. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna to want to make sure that I'm up to date. And I will speed through this. I always start, you know, I always start here, make sure I have everything current as far as what's on the system, so. Yeah, we've got 18 updates to do to the operating system and then a Firefox update. So we'll go ahead and tell it to do that. So that's done. So now what 
what I want to do, the, the next thing I want to do is it probably has not expanded. No. So I have a 500 gigabyte uh, SSD here on this T5. So as you can see, it's not seeing it all. Uh, clearly, uh, clearly it has not extended out the partitions. Now, normally on Raspbian, it will do that for you automatically, but uh, Pop! OS does not. So we have an extra step we have to do here, which is no big deal. I'm just going to install Gparted, which is not installed by default. Yeah. We'll go down here to the Applications Launcher, and we should see it right there. We'll authenticate as root, and we should get momentarily we should get our drive so you can see definitely it has not allocated it so what i want to do there on that one and then we'll say resize and move and then i could you know if you just want you know a, a fraction of the disk and you want to use the bulk of it somewhere else you can definitely do that but since everything is in that one partition i'm just going to go ahead and resize mine out to the max even though i doubt i will come close to even using this but who knows? Maybe I will. Okay, so that's all done. Uh, now, I know that probably a lot of you are going, well, wait a minute, you can't do that. You're up on a running partition. Yeah, that's right, I am. So it will see it. It will see that um, it has changed, as you can see here. But just to be on the safe side, I am going to go reboot immediately. I'm going to put a few things out here. Okay, so I should be able to take a look now at my age top. Looks like it's at 1.16 gig. I see 106 tasks running, 229 threads running, and my load average is about 1.66 right now. I'm just seeing if it goes down. Looks like it is going down a little bit, 1.4. So, I mean, for a Raspberry Pi, normally... I mean, that would be okay, I guess, but you know, it's not, it's not the kind of performance I would want to, the kind of load I'd want to see the system under when it's idle. So uh, hopefully it comes down to a reasonable amount. We'll come back and check this and see if it drops any further, but, um, oops. Well, I must have a, a little sticky on that keyboard. So, so we are running an older kernel, as you remember from the last video I did on Pop! OS, it's 5.15.8. This one is 5.13.0. And uh, so it is lagging up behind just a little bit uh, as far as the updates. Now, I suppose they probably will update it, that at some point. Of course, this is, this is running at 1.8 gigahertz, which is a little bit faster than a Raspberry Pi normally runs. I have overclocked this particular board up to 2 gig. I'll probably not experiment with that right now, but I will probably try to put those those uh, hooks into it and see if I can get this up a little faster. Uh, but yeah, this one will do okay up to about 2 gigahertz. 2.1, it gets real flaky, but it'll, it'll handle two just fine. So, okay, so let's do, we got that information. Let's see what we got here. We've got about, what, 1,600 applications here? 1,681, and no no snaps and no flat packs. I mean, snap, of course, is not installed by default. We can, we can prove that, and it's telling me that if you want it, you have to install the snap D. I don't. So we got... Um, Mm, about 5.1 gig in use, and that is a about 2 gig less than what we found on uh, the Raspberry Pi. Actually, closer to 3, because I think it was at 8 gig on the uh, on the x86 version of Pop! OS. So, yeah, it is taking up a little bit less space. I don't know what's missing, but we can find that out, I'm sure. Um, next thing I want to do is, of course... Um, 
let's make sure that we are running the right release and, and oops well just okay i'm trying to get used to the keyword 21.10 is what we're running so that's good let's go out to opt and we'll do our usual This will probably take a while to run, but that's okay. All right, so we got a 63, and you probably remember from yesterday it was a 62. Um, let's take a look and see what the issue is. So the SMTP banner, same problem as we had yesterday, and then there's no there's a firewall, mm -hmm. but there's no rules that are active on it, so... We need to install those. It's also complaining about the Linus release. It's 307, but hey, as you saw, I downloaded the latest one from the kernel. I have checked their website as well, and it is still 307. So uh, yeah, so they're, they're a little due for a, an update. Um, as far as, I wanna check one of the thing. So remember yesterday we put in and then it went out and looked for things available to install. I want to see if it finds anything. Ah, yeah, it did. So let's see if the ARM version has the same problem. Yep, it sure does. That's So it's consistent. Yep, it's consistent. If I do it the second time, will it work? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'd say no. <laughs> hmm. So yeah, that that's that is definitely a bug. So um I think uh we did we did check that and we checked memory. Oh, we were gonna go back and just see if uh the load average had come down a little bit. Yes, it has. It's down to 1.53. Oh, there it is. So yeah, it did it did finally launch. Um that was a little slow. No question about that. We'll talk okay. about this a little bit. So a couple of things. One is if you're out searching for how to install uh any of any version of the operating system onto a Raspberry Pi particularly an SSD, and you happen across the Tom's Hardware uh, article, just be aware that you is using an older version of the RPI imager. And they have you go through some steps in order to do the boot partition separate and then the root partition. You don't need to do that anymore. The, uh, the custom option will take the image that you are applying to the, the to the that you receive from Pop OS or from Raspbian, and then it's putting it directly down on that SSD. So, yeah, you won't have any trouble with it. As you saw, I mean, I am definitely running. <laughs> I'm definitely running on that. <laughs> so, uh, and not on an S on an SD card. The second thing I want to tell you is that if you do use an SD card, just be aware that if you have a system that is up and running all the time and you're using it pretty, well, let's say moderately heavy, you'll find that that SD card will, will wear out in about a year or so. Uh, there is a couple of scripts that maybe I should put up on my website that will tell you what the wear leveling is on the SD card. they will tell you how many writes and how many reads it's had. And then you can uh, judge from there whether or not to replace that SD card. I usually don't wait until they fail. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then I'll just dump the contents of the SD card to a, a take a DD and just dump it to a uh, an image and then dump it back to a new SD card and then put it back in and come up and run again. So um, 
Yeah, that's generally how I handle it. I replace if I'm running. I do have a few systems that are still running on SD cards because there isn't any other option to boot them off of a uh, off of an SD, an SSD or a hard drive. So at least not yet uh, on some of the older O droids. Some of the newer O droids, yeah, it's not a problem. Um, that I think. I mean, obviously the Raspberry Pi is going to be slower than an X eighty six, but I mean the Pi 4000 is probably the faster of the options unless you get the compute module. Uh, and I think that runs a little bit faster than this does even. Uh, but the stock Pi will be about 1.4 gigahertz and you can overclock that up. Uh, and how far you can go, yes, that's silicon lottery, right? Uh, depending upon where you can go with it. Uh, the only thing, uh, uh, the only comment I have is it still has the same bug with the application launcher, and I hope they fix that soon. And that's all I had for today. Hope you enjoyed this video. This is not a difficult task to do, as it turns out. So, um, oh, yeah, it, it is not a really big task. Now, there isn't any instructions on the Pop! OS site, which I find uh, kind of disturbing. I, I hope somebody corrects that. And, uh, yeah, I hope they do correct that. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. Have a happy holiday, and I will see you next week. Bye for now.